Welcome back everyone to Jane's Goodbye, the best of Project Inspire. Two and a half years ago, you did a story that people are still talking about based upon a graduation speech. Yeah, there was a great speech mm -hmm. right there. It was more though to us about the amazing young woman who gave it. Ella McKernan, a few months before her high school graduation, a doctor told her that she had cancer. And here is how Ella responded. <laughs> It's that time of year when high school valedictorians pull on caps and gowns and take podiums across the country. Today our valedictorian speaker is Ella McKernan. As is customary, Gonzaga Prep speaker earned the honor in part through impressive academic achievement. And I am honored to have the opportunity to speak to you today. Over the years, 18-year-old Ella McKernan dreamed of standing before her classmates on this very day. Well, maybe I dreamed about it. But in my dream, I definitely had hair. While Ella may have lost her long, dark hair, she's gained the kind of perspective generally untapped by someone her age. I stand before you today as living proof that life can hand you some major adversity that you never could have predicted. Up until two months ago, Ella's senior year was unfolding just as she'd planned. A 4.0 earned her acceptance letters to seven prestigious universities. She got a kick out of sports, and clearly her friends too. The only thing, there was this cough. Not alarming exactly, but naggingly persistent. But then I got back pain, so we went to the doctor, and we got some chest x-rays, and then they saw a bunch of uh, masses. Ewing's sarcoma, a rare bone cancer, had worked its way into Ella's lungs, her pelvis, and her arm. Ella figured she'd tackle the frightening diagnosis while juggling the demands of her waning senior year. I kind of thought I'd still be able to go to school, like, in between treatments or whatever. It turns out a weakened immune system and overwhelming pain would push her from her final two months of class. She spent those months either at home or trudging the few blocks to the hospital to stay days at a time. It's obviously a very life-threatening disease, but I mean, there's nothing you can do but have faith that it's going to be okay. Maybe it's faith that carried Ella to her senior prom. And now graduation, despite the fact doctors figured three rounds of chemo would sap too much strength. Maybe cancer is exactly the thing pulling a defiant Ella to take a seat at the podium today. There is no debate that our class is great at winning. But how are we at losing? Is that your new perspective speaking? Failure and losing and struggles, those are the things that you actually like have to fight through and those are the things that make you into a better person and change you and those are the things that take effort. Ella has always given effort, but when she looks back, any adversity of the past looks minuscule through the prism of cancer. So standing at that podium mm -hmm. and looking ahead, what do you think? Looking ahead for the next few months is, for me right now, kind of scary, <laughs> um, considering that I know that it's only going to get harder, but I know that beyond that, I am very excited for the rest of my life. She's excited for the rest of her life because she's handed cancer just one option, and that's to take a hike. Rough waters lie ahead for sure, and Ella will have to muster incredible strength to hold cancer to her ultimatum. But I get the feeling Ella has the kind of emotional reserve any of us would do well to start socking away. I know that I am prepared to face whatever challenges await me, in large part because of what I have learned here at Gonzaga Prep. Unlike her classmates, college for Ella will have to wait a year. And Ella will choose attendance between the University of Notre Dame, University of Washington, UCLA, or UC Berkeley. In the meantime, her immediate path is assured, from home to the hospital 
and back again. If you can deal with the hard times and you can push through those to get to the good times, that's what really defines you. Ella reminds her fellow classmates they have to believe goodness always lies ahead. And through this sickness and soon health, she'll be there rooting for each and every one of them. It will go forth and set the world on fire. I personally can't wait to see it. Thank you. My goodness. The one thing I keep thinking about is she was probably 18 years old That's during that I speech. Was thinking about. Talk about mature beyond her years. Right? My goodness. I couldn't handle that at this yeah. age. It was just amazing. We wow. all can learn from her. Mm -hmm. Can we? So I just talked with Ella, who is amazing. She is still fighting cancer. She and her parents traveled to last weekend's Notre Dame game, and she earned a little fun because she's been going through rigorous treatment still. Oh she spent nine months traveling to Dallas, Texas, a couple times a month for a clinical trial. That trial did not prove successful, so she's now back at Sacred Heart undergoing a new treatment. She's still the same super funny, super positive, super cute young lady that you saw in that story. So we're all sending our good thoughts to Ella, and we would love it if you would join us in doing the same, because she sure deserves My it. My goodness. Consider it done. Yeah, pulling for Ella, right? Yeah. Go get him. Well, you have probably noticed in all these stories tonight that Jane can write with the best <laughs> in the country. And this next story is a Jane writing masterpiece. It's about a local high school student who got a rare, perfect score on the ACT. I didn't have them say this <laughs> stuff. So I found out about a special connection between this really smart local mm -hmm. student and his incredible grandparents. It was my honor to tell this story that we called More Than a Perfect Score. Of the 874 students enrolled at Gonzaga Prep, today they're about to turn down the house lights for what? That's because one of our classmates did something Remarkable. So remarkable, it's achieved by only about one-tenth of one percent out of millions of high school students. The highest score possible on the ACT is the 36. And while the student who accomplished this extraordinary feat is not one to grab the spotlight, first and foremost, short of diving out of the spotlight, today there's no avoiding it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would turn your attention to the center aisle, Give a huge round of applause to Jacob! Even more rare, Jacob Nordhagen is still a junior. The 16-year-old took the ACT to just kind of identify any weaknesses. <laughs> Turns out, no weaknesses here. At first when I saw it, I'm like, oh wow, I got a 36. So when he showed us his score, he couldn't believe it. So he's like, dad, this is for real. And then my husband was like, I think that's a sample. I think that's a sample score. Are you sure that's that's your actual score? And like that's his name right on top of it though. So I think that's I think that's pretty much his score. First I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's my my real score. It was rough. I know. It was. It's both real and according to his chemistry teacher, kind of unreal. I've never seen that. Ever. I didn't even know it was possible. You did all bring the little periodic tables. And the joke answer would be, he was nothing before he came to me. The real answer, says Mr. Um, Flanagan, multiple choice is that Jacob doesn't really need much coaxing. I read a lot, and I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a computer science class, um, and I'm, I'm kind of dabbling in coding. SP2. While it may seem like this kid does nothing more than dabble in decimals and data, Jacob is also sharp on the soccer field. <laughs> But I learned where he really shines is in a different field entirely. Uh, I'm actually part of the fifth generation to work on this farm. These are our chickens. We've got pens along uh, both walls here. Chickens, cows, and when the weather warms, a bounty of produce too. Running this Chatteroy farm takes a lot of work from family, which includes Jacob and his three younger brothers. I'm Andrew and I'm 15. I'm Caleb and I'm 13 years old. I'm Lucas and I'm nine years old. Yeah, what we're doing here is really just kind of a continuation of the, of the family legacy.
it turns out the Nordhagen family legacy includes a celebrated love story. Jacob's great-grandparents are Floyd and Margaret Nordhagen. They were just really nice people. A pair filled with a love for others and for each other. You say hi to puppy, puppy, puppy. Floyd was known for bragging about his wife's beauty and how lucky he was that she chose him. The two did not like to spend time apart. When Floyd could no longer push the lawnmower by himself, the two pushed it together. People who knew these two knew they were witnessing a love that was almost legendary. People saw that they were holding hands when they passed away. That was even more special, I think. That final day of their 68-year marriage came abruptly in October of 2013. Family says it was God who took Floyd and Margaret together in this crash. Their final act of love even stunned troopers who found the couple hand in hand in the wreckage. You know, you don't see that every day. Um, we actually had to ask her to let go of him so that we could get him out of the car. It's a story of love that lasts a lifetime, which I think is rare these days. Which is why the story of Floyd and Margaret's unbreakable bond was shared by people across the U.S. and beyond. Something that may solely appear tragic, perhaps also a gift. I honestly don't know what they would have done without each other. So in a way it was a blessing that they went at the same time. So you see Floyd and Margaret together are woven into the fabric of their farm, woven into Jacob and his brothers too. Their goodness is alive and well in Jacob who pours his heart into the farm where bonds seem to grow stronger than steel. Oh, they'll be really, really proud. Proud of the kid who has his sights set on Stanford, a school fittingly known as the farm. And while this stunningly perfect college admissions test should help Jacob get to that farm, much like Floyd and Margaret, Jacob will likely never linger far from this one. Being with my family is my favorite thing to do. Perhaps that's why the Nordhagen family cultivates such beautiful eggs, perfect produce, and an extraordinary crop of people, too. My yeah, goodness. That was something else. It's, <laughs> gosh, uh, what an incredible family. I know. You know and the, that story about the grandparents, how they passed away mm -hmm. together, that pushed me over the edge. Yeah. I'm celebrating this brilliance of this wonderful child who comes from mm -hmm. this great family and then to hear that part of the story stop I know. <laughs> <laughs> so many layers to that story right yeah. Yeah. But at the heart of it is Jacob and at the beginning of the piece it's kind of funny because you could tell he does not want to be in the spotlight yeah. no but I mean there's no getting out of it with no. the perfect ACT school yeah. exactly so. and here's a great update Jacob is now going to school at the farm oh. also <laughs> known as Stanford it's just as he'd hoped when I shared his story initially so he's just starting his third week of classes he loves it so far he plans on majoring in computer science, and get this, he wants to get both his bachelor's degree and his <laughs> master's degree in four years. Well, sure, why not? Yeah. yeah. And something tells me he will do just that. Oh, right? I think you're right. My goodness. I think so, too. Fantastic stuff. All right, now it is time for one of my favorite pieces, the Project Inspire story that won Jane and photojournalist Brett Albury a National Murrow Award. Yeah, so here is Jane and Brett in New York City back in 2016 with their National Murrow. So for broadcast journalism in our industry, winning a National Murrow is like winning an Oscar. Yeah. So I just have to say, Brett is the greatest photojournalist I've been blessed to work with. He makes most of these stories you're seeing tonight so much better with his shooting and editing, and I love him and will miss him dearly. Mm -hmm. So here's the story Jane and Brett won for that uh, award. It's called Hotel Swimmer. You wake up every morning looking for your answer. If you want to reach the top of your game, you have to put in the work. You're waiting for your sign. Morning and night, 17-year-old Emma Shans puts in the work, stretching her ability. She's become the top swim recruit in Washington State and one of the best in the nation. Her times are incredible. She's already qualified for the Olympic trials in five events. 
Imagine accomplishing that through thousands of grueling training hours in a remote logging town and a hotel pool. Benny's Colville Inn, this is Reservations. How may I help you? Benny's Colville Inn, the only place in town with an indoor pool. Emma! Andy, hey, what's up? Not too much. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Hi. Yes, swimming as usual. <laughs> Benny's has bragging rights to some of the biggest fish. And now the hometown girl who swims like one. Tom, the maintenance man, knows. I see her in the pool almost every morning. She gets up and comes down and swims in the morning, and I'm not up by then. Hotel owner Andy has watched Emma train seriously here since she was 13 years old. I would say it's pretty unusual. Her situation isn't just unusual. Experts tell us it's just about unheard of. Well, this is the only pool here. Like, they don't really, can't really capture that in their mind. Did you know Emma is an elite swimmer? No, I didn't. From Colville? Her? Really? Well, I knew she was a very good swimmer, but I didn't know she was an elite swimmer. Oh, you're kidding me. Do you every come day. here every day? I, yeah, twice a day. <laughs> she works out about four hours daily, and who knows what she'll encounter each time. Take this particular day. This Olympic hopeful has to negotiate around everything from the kid with the noodle. Go play, go swim. To a swim party of little girls. It's a little bit hard because there are a lot of people here sometimes. Have you ever whacked someone on accident? Uh, <laughs> I actually kicked someone in the side on accident, but um, I felt really bad about it. <laughs> it's bound to happen. The pool is about five yards shorter than regulation. And without warning flags, the backstroke can be dicey. <laughs> have you ever hit your head? I have. I've like smashed it, the goggles into my face. And the pool's shallow. There's no diving. You know, <laughs> diving the way every competitive swim race begins. Oh, I mean, that's kind of the unfortunate part because it's so shallow here, but you know, I just have to work for what I have. Emma does have a bit of traditional training time. She spends weekends with the Spokane Waves aquatic team. But the bulk of her training happens solo. <laughs> I mean, as solo as you can get here. Yeah, and that's like kind of the hard part too, is there's like no one here to watch me and tell me like if I'm doing something good or bad or right or wrong. So I You're think- You're doing something right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right enough for 140 different colleges to ask her to join their team next year. She's a shining example that you don't always need the best tools to be the best. So that's all that I really need is water and a lane, so. <laughs> Imagine what she'll achieve when she has something more. She's settled on UCLA for next year, a university with six different pools. It's crazy to think like going from like Colville to LA, which is like one of the biggest city yeah. cities. So tonight, the twilight is setting on Emma's training at Benny's Colville Inn. Here comes the Soon, her journey will take her to a big city, but she'll never take for granted this imperfect little pool. Greatest. She's fantastic, and oh, you don't want to discount any of her hard work, but oh. it almost just seems kind of like fate with her, right? Like she yeah. was destined for this. She's got a mindset for it, for wow. sure. Yeah, holy and, moly. And I talked with Emma on Friday. Mm. She's as cute as can be. Yes. <laughs> Time flies. She finished at UCLA. Wow. She earned not one, but two school records mm. in swimming, and she tells me she's most proud that she was elected team captain by her peers senior year. Not surprised. She recently got a job with Fisher Investments. She's working in Vancouver, Washington now, and she says she needed a little break from swimming, so she's doing some kickboxing oh right boy. now. <laughs> but coaching swimming may be in her future too. Good for her. Great story. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, the catalyst for Project Inspire started yeah. with Steve Gleason. That's because if you need an example of living a purposeful life yeah. in the face of monumental adversity, you just look at Steve. Mm -hmm. He earned a reputation as a hero while playing professional football. But what happens to a football hero stripped of his, his athletic ability? Well, if you're Steve, you pivot. Mm -hmm. This is a man who lost his ability to move under his own power, yet he managed to move mountains. He's taught us to try and focus more on what we have, not what we don't have. He's always been generous with his time, and he and his family have welcomed me into their home to share their journey. So I will always be grateful to carry his example with me and grateful that I was in a position to share it with you. So a huge thank you to mm. Steve and a thank you to all of you for sharing your time with me over the years. I will be on the other side of the mountains and I will always be rooting for you here. Absolutely. 
I just have to say, I, I've worked with you for the past four years, and I think you're amazing. You're an yeah. amazing newsroom leader. You're an amazing journalist. And your writing is fantastic. I remember when uh, I came out here for my interview, and our boss said, Jane is one of the best writers in the country. I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. But it's true. You, I mean, as evident by the pieces that we just saw, it's fantastic. And I wish you weren't leaving, but I'm happy that you're going to be closer to your family. It's hard, obviously. I'm in tears. Yeah. But I definitely hit the jackpot um, mm. with you two. And please keep watching them because they're as great and nice behind the scenes as they are mm. over the air. Well, you came to Krem when we really needed you. That's and we're very thankful you came. Yeah. We're, we won't be able to replace you ever, but we're certainly happy for you. Yeah, we are very happy for you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'll be back. Yeah. Maybe forever, and you'll be like, wait, why are you back? Well, we're planning, <laughs> on, we're planning on going over the weekend after. We're right. just going mean, to stay at the house, and yeah. we hope you have okay. some grub there. We have a free place to stay in <laughs> Seattle now, so there we yeah. go. That's what yeah. we're told. <laughs> okay, here is how everyone at Krem okay. wants to say thanks and goodbye <clears throat> to Jane. Closing time, turn all of the lights on over every boy and every girl. Closing time, one last call for alcohol, so finish your whiskey or beer. <laughs> Some other beginnings and 